Hey everybody, Christina here with Burnley and Trowbridge, and this week's uh, video is going to deal with something that a lot of you have been asking about that isn't necessarily sewing itself, but is certainly sewing related. So for today, we're actually going to be talking about hand health. When you do a lot of hand sewing, and those of you that are knitters or crocheters might experience some of this as well, you might find that for prolonged periods of stitching, you get maybe muscle cramps in your hands, you might find that maybe your carpals start to feel a little tight, or your hands start to feel uncomfortable, maybe they swell, um, there are all sorts of things that can happen. And some of this um, could just be due to maybe pre-existing conditions that you have already, but a lot of the fatigue that we experience in our hands actually happens due to factors that we can prevent. Things like posture, actually warming up our hands or stretching our hands, our wrists, even our necks and our shoulders, um, paying attention to the angle of the wrist when it's sewing. So today's video is going to focus on a few of those things that we have picked out here at Burnley and Trowbridge that we find kind of helps us maybe the most and that we think will be the most useful to you. Now disclaimer time, we are not medical professionals. So if you are experiencing pain that is uh, chronic or intense or extreme, you probably want to go check in with your doctor. This video is not going to be the cure for that. But if you are just wanting to take better care of your hands so that you can continue stitching uh, or crocheting or knitting uh, for a longer time with less fatigue, this is the video for you. A lot of the care for our hands actually begins before we even start stitching. It's a good idea to treat your hands the way that you would treat any other muscles before you start an exercise. So things like warming them up or stretching are going to be pretty important for long-term hand health. Today I'm going to show you a couple of stretches and uh, kind of warm-up exercises that can get your hands ready to stitch if you're going to be stitching for maybe 30 minutes to an hour to even more than that. Now I like to do these stretches before I start sewing, but if my hands start to get fatigued or my wrists get fatigued as I'm sewing, I will stop, give myself a little break, and do some of these stretches in between as well. So you're not limited to just before. They can also be very effective to help restore your hands and wrists after a stitching session. So a stretch that is pretty common in things like yoga is often referred to as prayer hands. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take both palms, uh, facing them towards each other, keep the elbows in kind of a relaxed position next to your body, and we're going to go ahead and drop our hands, and you should actually feel that stretch kind of right along uh, kind of the underside of your forearm along your carpals. So again, you're going to Take your palms, put them together, and kind of drop until you feel it. Now you might be able to go pretty low, but pay attention, you don't want your palms to start to separate. You want to keep the heel of your palms together, and that's going to give you a, a nice stretch there. And you can just hold this stretch for a few seconds, and then release it, and then go ahead and do it again. You can do that a couple of times if you want to. A variation on this stretch, but we're going to take our hands, put them together, and actually tilt them forward, and you should feel this through your forearms as well. And you can bring them up to your body if you want. Um, I feel this stretch kind of right along here. So if you're feeling tightness in your forearms or in that carpal area, those are two good stretches that you can use to help you out. Another stretch that is pretty good for your wrists in particular and carpal area is what I don't know that there's an actual name for this. I just call it the table stretch because I use a table to help me do this. Um, so there are two ways that you can do it. We kind of have uh, the first stretch, which is gonna help right here on your arm. And we're gonna just take your fingers flat, put them on the table and roll forward. You could also do this without a table um, by just using your hand, grabbing 
your palm, thumb on the outer side of the opposite hand, and just applying a little bit of pressure. I just find that I get a little bit of a, a better stretch when I do this with the table. It's a little easier, and then I can do both hands at the same time. Now, the opposite of that, oh, this table is a little tall. I'm gonna get Angela's step stool. Oh, there we go, okay. Now, the opposite of that is to actually take your hands, position them so your palms are flat on the table with the inside of your forearms facing away from you, and you can lean into the stretch. And you should feel this down that entire inside of your forearm carpal area. This is really one of my favorite stretches personally. You can do that for a few seconds and then release. If you're finding that your fingers feel tight more so than your wrists or carpals, there are some stretches that are finger specific as well. One thing that you can do is actually, this is gonna look really strange. I'm gonna look like I'm making spirit fingers right now, but I'm not, I'm stretching my hands. You're gonna go ahead and open your fingers as wide as possible. So you wanna stretch them out, open them as much as you can for say three to five seconds, and then actually go ahead and curl them into a fist with your thumb on the outer portion and squeeze for three to five seconds. And then go ahead and open back up and you can do that for say three to five repetitions and then just give yourself a little bit of a shake when you're done. Another thing that you can do for your fingers is to take one hand, extend the arm, palm facing away from you, take your other hand and kind of meet your fingers right between the second and third uh, joint or segment by your knuckles and then gently roll back so that your fingers remain straight, but you're rolling them back at the knuckle joint at the base of your palm. Obviously, don't do any of these stretches so hard that they hurt. Um, you may not be very flexible to start, so you just wanna lean into the stretch until you feel it hold it for a couple of seconds, and then gently release it. And do it on both sides. Now, as much as we focus on the wrists and fingers when we're sewing, because those seem to be the obvious culprits, posture is also a very important thing to consider for your hand health as well. Because really, everything uh, from here to here um, connects to the spine. And so making sure that when you are hand sewing, that you are sitting in a posture that is comfortable and supportive for your body will just help keep everything aligned so that nothing is getting pinched or uh, pushed in a way that is uncomfortable and might cause issues later on. This also means neck and shoulders can actually be a part of what causes us pain or discomfort from extended periods of sewing. So, well, yes, we definitely wanna focus on stretching our fingers and our wrists, it's also a good idea to loosen up our shoulders and our neck as well. A couple of really easy things that you can do for that are just some shoulder rolls. So relax your arms to your side, uh, kind of lifting your body. Uh, imagine that there's kind of a rod going directly through the center of your body, kind of lifting you up. And you're gonna go ahead and pull the shoulders up by the ears, roll them backwards to open the chest, and then bring them back forward. And just do that a few times. It actually feels really good. I think I'm tense. Make sure that you rotate and you're doing that both forwards and backwards to get a full range of the stretch. Neck rolls can also be a good way to help loosen up your neck muscles. 
um, particularly if you are not being careful about where your work is in relation to your head. If you're kind of hunching a lot when you're stitching, that's gonna create a lot of tension in the neck and shoulder region. Um, so loosening those muscles up every once in a while can be a really good preventative measure from uh, fatigue or pain in the future. So a simple way to do a neck roll is just to tilt the chin down, slowly rotate, And then, of course, do it in the other direction as well. If you're like me and you carry a lot of your uh, tension of your body in your neck and shoulders, another useful stretch can actually be uh, to just take one hand. Uh, so in my instance, in this case, I'm going to take my left hand. I'm going to place it over my head by my right ear. I'm just going to gently use that to lean my neck, lean my head over. And you'll feel that stretch right down the side of your neck into the top of your shoulder. And hold it for a few seconds. And then switch. Again, don't stretch to the point where it hurts. You wanna to stretch to the point where you feel the muscles beginning to kind of engage and lengthen. Uh, these shouldn't be painful exercises. And if they're causing you any pain, as we said before, you wanna make sure that you see a doctor to look into what is the root of that issue. All right, so those are some things that you can do uh, kind of before you get started sewing uh, or really just on a regular basis in the morning or before bed to keep your fingers, your wrists, your neck and your shoulders in a happier state. Um, but there are some things that you can do while you're sewing that will reduce the fatigue and stress that you're putting on your hands, your wrists, your arms. Um, posture is one of them. Another thing is paying attention to the way that you are actually holding your hands. For instance, uh, we know when it comes to things like typing or other repetitive motions with our wrists and hands that we wanna keep a fairly neutral position to the hand. If you play piano, you've probably been instructed on this as well. You wanna make sure when you're stitching that you're actually maintaining a neutral wrist position. This can be kind of difficult sometimes because if we're sitting in an awkward position or if we're not really paying attention to what we're doing with our hands, um, our wrists can actually end up kind of engaging or overextending as we're stitching. So if you find yourself holding your needles with your wrist tilted either heavily inwards or outwards, something that you can do is try to maintain a neutral wrist position as you stitch, allowing the arm to do some of that movement. So we don't want to stitch like this with that wrist doing all of the work. We actually want to engage the arm. So as you're stitching, as you're taking those stitches, let some of your arm do the work for you to ease up some of the strain on the wrist. Thread length can actually be a big culprit in this. If you are stitching with thread that is too long, you might find that you're pulling the thread and ideally we kind of recommend a, a thread length that kind of goes from here to here because when it's folded over, it's actually a nice length for the span of your arm. If your thread is too long and you hit the end of the arm span, but you still have thread to pull, a lot of times it's really easy and we kind of wanna jerk the wrist back to take up the, the last couple inches of slack in that thread. So if you're finding that you're stitching with thread that's too long and it's causing you to overextend the wrist, try cutting your thread lengths a little shorter. You'll be less likely to overextend the wrist and you're also putting less strain on the arm from having to pull even further away from the body. Another thing that a lot of folks struggle with, and this is actually something that even after years of hand sewing, 
I still struggle with on a fairly regular basis and I have to remind myself to be aware of is the tension in our hands. When you are stitching by hand, your hands become the tensioner. They are the machine, essentially. What that means is any tension that is being applied to both the thread and the fabric is coming from your muscles. And if you over tension, if you're holding onto your fabric so tightly, um, you'll notice a lot of times if you pay really close attention to my hands when I'm stitching on uh, any of our sew alongs, you might find that occasionally uh, I'll have a finger that's kind of hanging out and you can see that it's really engaged and really tense because the rest of my hand is so tightly holding on to the fabric uh, for my other hand to stitch that that finger has nothing else to do and the only, uh, the only way left for it to rest is at that really weird angle with all of that tension on the muscle. I don't need to hold my fabric that tightly. It's not actually doing a whole lot for me in terms of making it easier for me to stitch. And it will also put a lot more strain and fatigue on my hands so that by the end of the day of sewing, my left hand, which is holding my work while my right hand stitches, will actually be uh, more tired than my right hand is. So paying attention to how tightly you're holding to things, um, how tightly you're holding your needle. You don't need to hold your needle with a death grip. You can be friends with your needle and give it a gentle hug. Uh, you just need to hold it enough to control it. You don't want to hold it so tightly that uh, it's going to leave your fingers strained when you're done. And of course, don't be afraid of supports. If you're finding that it's very difficult to keep your wrist in a neutral position, or you find that the blood flow to your fingers when you're stitching uh, is maybe not as good as you would like, don't be afraid to try things like compression gloves or wrist supports to help train your wrist to stay in that position. For many of us, those types of supports can be a very useful addition to our toolkit. But of course, if you're not sure, check with your doctor. They'll be able to tell you if it's something that would be beneficial to you or not. Now, our list today is not comprehensive. It's just a start. And I'm sure if you look online or um, in other places, you might find some really great additional resources for additional stretches or other things that you can do to improve your hand health. Um, feel free to tell us in the comments below if there's anything that you all do that you find works really well for you. So friends, thank you for joining us. Um, that's it for today's video, but we do hope that if you haven't already, you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Of course, follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see what we're getting up to on a daily basis. And don't forget to check out our website every Tuesday when new products go up. Until next time. Thank you.